This investigative programme contains graphic descriptions of violence and themes of loss and distress, which some viewers may find upsetting. Tonight, the new series, True Life Crime, investigates the most harrowing mysteries, rocking headlines and social feeds. Young lives gone too soon. Their deaths were shocking and haunting questions remain. I'm True Life Crime UK correspondent Linda Ade, and I'm here to join the dots and expose the truth. March 7th, 2018. 30-year-old Georgina Garcella goes missing after leaving her seaside home. She just disappeared in broad daylight. None of her friends or family have heard from her since. We are becoming increasingly concerned about Georgina's well-being. How did we get from sort of missing to murder? The police suspect foul play, but does a flawed investigation miss crucial leads? That could well be the last person to see Georgina alive. Could the underworld hold vital clues? She was travelling in the company of very dangerous and ruthless people. And can anyone solve the continuing mystery of what happened to Georgina? I often drive past and see the pictures, and I often say, where are you? God damn it, where are you? I'm on my way to Worthing, on the south coast of England to investigate the disappearance of Georgina Garcella. And I'm heading straight into an open, active inquiry. Today, it's only memories of her that remain. Oh, shit. Oh, wow. Oh, my God, it's everywhere. The posters of Georgina. £5,000 reward. I can see from these posters that Georgina's unsolved disappearance still haunts this town. Happy birthday to you! Woo, got it! Wow! Um, amazing! Thank you. Georgina was of dual English and Arab heritage. She spent her early years in Libya, but had lived on the south coast since she was 10. What sort of person was she? And was there anything going on in her life that can help me unravel the mystery? Hello. How are you doing? I've arranged to meet her mum, Andrea. You've got some photos. Yeah, have, yeah. Have a look at them. Seen them as a baby. Oh, wow. Probably two, How old? two or three days old. Two or three days. Wow, you look gorgeous. I mean, just had a baby. <laughs> what was she like as a little girl? Cheeky. OK. She was um, very friendly, um, very loving. It was one of those little girls that warmed to everybody. And Georgina would often come home from school with a, a kitten in her pocket. A kitten? <laughs> yeah. She was compassionate. Georgina grew into a more mischievous, naughty girl. Um, but she was lovable. Did Georgina have any personal struggles? Georgina was suffered from bulimia. She did have issues with sort of binge drinking. She didn't know when to stop. Right. And that's why she did find it difficult to hold a job. When was the last time that you saw her? The last time I saw Georgina was on the morning of the 7th of March, about 10 to 8 in the morning. She told me about her phone. It wasn't working. And I was in a hurry, get ready for work. She gave me a kiss on the cheek. I love you, love you, mummy. And then that was it. When did you start to worry? I didn't come back until half nine. Looked just sort of past the bedroom and she wasn't there. And I was like, oh, she's out, the boyfriend's out. So it was, it was quite normal for her to be out and stay out? She'd stay out for a few days, but she's an adult. Right, OK. But then I said, well, she's got no phone, has she? She obviously didn't get the phone fixed. I think about four days, five days, then it four, was... Four, five days? It was like, shall we try and contact her friends? I think by sort of six days, the boyfriend rang and he just said, oh, was George there? And I said, no, I thought she was with you. He said, I haven't seen her. What was that relationship like? They split up because the relationship had been up and down, hadn't been going well. So in that moment when he said to you he hadn't seen her, then I what was going my in instant mind? thought was, should we just ring hospitals in case she's had an accident? We still didn't think, like, ring the police, she's missing. It didn't, it just didn't, just didn't go into our minds. Shortly afterwards, her increasingly worried family did involve the police. 
Ten days on, they began looking into her personal life to see if there was anything that could account for her disappearance. It sounds like Georgina was in a relationship, or at least she was in one quite recently. And if her relationship had just split, it could be that she just wanted some space. I've made contact with some of those who knew her best. People who knew her character inside out and who would be able to tell if something was wrong before she went missing. Growing up, all of us girls, we were all really close. Um, so we would all watch films together. We'd teach each other how to do hairstyles and doing each other's makeup. She was quite hardy sometimes. If anyone ever said anything bad about you, she'd be the big sister. She's just really caring. We were very close growing up. She was very loving, caring, cheeky. Yay! Wow. Wow. wow! She struggled a bit when she came over here, obviously, because the cultural difference and, and things like that. I have so many memories, absolutely, like, laughing our heads off. She's such a beautiful person. Be hearing the news that she'd gone missing. It was horrible. My heart just sunk, and I just knew that something wasn't right. I knew Georgina wouldn't just disappear. I'm meeting one of Georgina's oldest friends, Wayne. Maybe he can tell me where her head was at. How close were you and Georgina before she disappeared? We were close. We were good friends. What sort of place was Georgina at when she disappeared? Where, where was she at in life? She spoke often of just moving away, of just going. She definitely wanted to do this, possibly for a fresh start. She spoke about moving away? Yeah. No mobile phones, no contact, no communication. And it's just a, a break from the norm. It's just cutting off the outside world. And she was dead set on going for at least six months. I'm pretty taken back to find out that she had intention to leave Worthing. It was the first thing I thought when I heard she'd gone missing. It was? It was the first thing I thought to myself, because we'd discussed it numerous times. It wouldn't be unusual for someone to want to get away and make a fresh start after a relationship split. But for Georgina, it seems odd. A move from Worthing wouldn't only mean leaving her friends behind, but her mum and three sisters too. Arish is the youngest of those sisters. Hey, Arish. What went through her mind after Georgina left her mum's home that day? I think for the past few years, she wanted to do something with her life. I know that end of February, she was looking for a new place to live, because right. obviously she'd broken up with a partner, and she just wanted to start living this sort of life that she wanted for herself, being a bit more independent. The theories the police had to look into was there a possibility that she had taken her own life? I've never considered that an option, that she would take her own life. So when did you start to worry? We were like, oh, we haven't heard from Georgina. She's an adult, she had a life to live, but she's never been gone for longer than, yeah, maybe a week. Is there any chance that Georgina could have run away? I know that Georgina's obviously had mental health issues, there is obviously a chance she could have run away, but I don't believe that. Her family are literally the one constant that she's had, no matter what's happened. She's always had us, so she wouldn't leave us. Georgina's friends and family have bravely filled me in about her life. But with Georgina now classed as a missing person and no word from her in over two weeks, Arish tells me the police started to make inquiries. Journalist Jody Doherty Cove was assigned to the story from the start. I'm meeting him to find out if there were any early breakthroughs in the case. So the first big break was actually a piece of CCTV uh, in a corner shop. And this oh. emerged around a month into the investigation. As, as local media outlets, it's our job to, to help with that appeal. What, what's the CCTV showing? So the CCTV shows Georgina in a corner shop. She had uh, a broken phone. Uh, she's gone into the corner shop uh, to, to get this fixed. Can I have a look? Yeah, this is Georgina. This was the first CCTV oh. images that we, we, we had of her um, on, on the day of her disappearance. Wow. It's, it's quite surreal <laughs> seeing her for the first time like this. 
she's smiling. It looks like maybe she's cracking a few jokes with the shopkeeper. The, the shopkeeper was uh, actually asked whether he could fix um, Georgina's phone. Um, All right, this is what she's taken out of her bag now. Exactly. Right. There's nothing that looks concerning about this. You don't get a sense that any trouble was brewing or she, she felt threatened by anything. She looks quite comfortable. He says, unfortunately, we can't fix it here. You're going to have to go somewhere else. This CCTV probably lasts for around five minutes. It yeah. just seems like a regular exchange with yeah. a shopkeeper. Sussex Police issued out a statement as saying, you know, bank cards hadn't been used, mobile phone hadn't been used. So, phone's been off, can't be used to track her. Bank cards haven't been used. No purchases made that day. Can't find her movements in that way. It sounds like she's completely disappeared. Exactly. Seeing Georgina on camera like this has given me a sense of her state of mind that day. She looks happy and at ease. But her life and the lives of those around her was all about to change. They said that they saw Georgina with two men. They were fighting. It was suggested, actually, that the, the men were known locally. I'm investigating the disappearance of 30-year-old Georgina Garcella, who vanished in broad daylight from her hometown of Worthing on the Sussex coast in 2018. Early on March 7th, she kissed her mum goodbye, but her family never saw her again. A clip of CCTV shows Georgina in Worthing on the morning of her disappearance, but her movements after that are a total mystery. After speaking to one of the staff, she leaves and appears to turn right towards the centre of town. I want to see that street for myself. Well, this is it. This is the shop Georgina went to when she left the house that morning. It's so close to her mum's house, it must have been her first stop. What we don't know is where she went to afterwards. I remember it was at my mum's house and the police sort of brought this laptop and they just put it down in front of us and, and showed us this clip of Georgina and I knew the shop. We all just felt, me and my sister and my mum, we just felt suddenly a little bit shocked because um, it was feeling a little bit more real that Georgina is a missing persons case. We watched it and we just kept asking to replay it because that was the first time that we had seen her in so long. For three and a half weeks, Georgina's family had no news on her whereabouts. Then there was a new lead for them to hold on to. A witness came forward saying they'd seen Georgina in another part of town. According to that witness, Georgina was seen here, less than half a mile away from her home, with two men. Who were they? And did they hold the key to Georgina's whereabouts? This was a question the family also wanted answering. A witness who lived near Tesco's Express said that they saw Georgina with two men. They were fighting. The police told us that story could never be verified because the Tesco's CCTV was incorrectly taken. How do you mean? So when the police actually went to get the CCTV from Tesco's, um, the wrong date was actually provided. So they couldn't there was... verify no. that eyewitness that came forward, his statement would have been crucial. It was frustrating because there have been so few leads in the case. It was Tesco's Express, it was right nearby. It's next to the last place that you can see that she was seen. To know that this CCTV has gone from that area, to know that no other CCTV has been found, it was incredibly frustrating. In a review, Sussex Police stated that initial inquiries were proportionate and the investigation was escalated appropriately. Officers viewed the CCTV from Tesco Express on the night the report was made, but say the altercation wasn't captured. They seized the footage, but the wrong day was handed over. Then delays in reviewing meant crucial CCTV was wiped at source. With police unable to corroborate the witness statement, the family's concerns about the handling of the case took root. Even so, inquiries were continuing apace. 
I've come back to meet Jodie Doherty Cove from South Coast newspaper The Argus to see what they did next. I know that the police had dismissed the witness statement. So what else were they doing at that time? There was actually a significant uh, development shortly after that where two men were arrested on suspicion of murder. Murder? Mm. OK, that is massive. There was unconfirmed rumours at the time that the person who was arrested had significant contact with Georgina uh, leading up to her disappearance. Seriously? So four weeks into the investigation and the police haven't found a body, but are arresting people on suspicion of murder. For Georgina's family, that must have been overwhelming. Sarah is Georgina's older sister. So Georgina's case had moved to a murder investigation. Yeah, they you... said that they had arrested two people, but that was it. They didn't say why or what the reasons were. They couldn't tell us, and those people were released afterwards. So, what was going on in your mind? To go from not doing anything and not telling us what's going on to just suddenly it going to a homicide investigation. Why would they arrest them for a homicide? if there was no reason to. What was the reason for this lack of information from the police? The family believes it was because of her lifestyle. Mum Andrea's already told me about the heavy drinking. Off camera, I've heard from some of her friends, Georgina also dabbled in drugs. She was at a place where she was kind of maybe struggling mm. with her mental health. Yeah, I would say she was a bit like lost. I mean, we did feel like that because just of her um, lifestyle, really. And um, just the way we saw like other cases being handled, we didn't feel like that hers was treated serious enough. That must have been such a difficult time for you and your family. We felt quite let down. Between errors in collecting crucial CCTV evidence, plus poor communication over the move to arrest suspects on suspicion of murder, I'm getting a picture of a family that feels let down by police and frustrated by their lack of progress. I need to know the police's side of the story. Hi, Andy. Hi, Linda. You all right? Andy Wollstoneholm is a detective chief inspector with the Sussex Force. He's been on the Georgina case for over two years and has agreed to meet with me to share some details. Georgina's family described a breakdown in the confidence they had for Sussex police. About a year into the investigation into Georgina's disappearance, I took over um, the role of senior investigating officer from my predecessor. It's really disappointing to hear that the family don't have confidence in our investigation. What were your first impressions of the case? I remember logging on to the case file system and seeing that there were just thousands of documents um, within it. It was going to be um, a challenge for me to um, get through absolutely everything that had been done. We've had two arrests early on in the investigation. They were arrested, searches were conducted, mobile phone examinations. The senior investigating officer was able to satisfy himself that they were, um, there was no evidence to suggest that they'd been involved in any way in Georgina's disappearance. So the two suspects brought in under suspicion of murder are swiftly discounted. But what about that reported sighting of Georgina with two people close to Tesco Express? Who were the two men and were they ever found and questioned? So, I mean, it's really hard to talk in detail about this case because it is still a live, active homicide investigation. I do have to be circumspect about what I can say um, about information on our systems. On the 31st of March, we had um, contact from a witness saying they had a, a potential sighting of Georgina. What did they say that they had seen? They'd seen um, someone that they say is Georgina, um, and they'd seen her in the company of two men, and she was having an altercation. Did you try to corroborate it using CCTV in the area? Yes, of course, and the, the logical place to, to start with that was Tesco Express, but unfortunately, the CCTV it didn't capture the area that this altercation was said to have happened. Did Georgina's lifestyle initially uh, affect the way the investigation was handled? Yeah, absolutely. It would have done, yes. It did? Yeah, absolutely. Um, hearing from Andrea that Georgina had vulnerabilities, that she was uh, involved in alcohol and that she did have other connections, that would have increased our concern. And the fact that she would just suddenly disappear 
without any contact with anyone else ever is very unusual. But there's been no body found to date. Why did you class it as a murder? Every interaction that we have with the world really leaves a trace. Um, our interactions with GPs, with, with government agencies, mobile phones, all of these sorts of things. And unfortunately, we've not been able to find anything that supports that in the case of Georgina. While the police investigation continued, Georgina's family stepped up efforts to find her themselves. I won't give up, no. What did you do to try and find some answers for um, yourself? We started the Missing Georgina campaign right, okay. and we set up a Facebook page. When you launched the Facebook page, how many tips were you getting in? We were getting sort of hundreds of them really. Went, um, hundreds? In the, during the night, you'd wake up in the morning and the, you'd have sort of messages in the inbox. Um, it was, wow. Yeah, it was quite, quite a lot. Can I, can I have a look at them? Um, yeah, I can let you look at them. Andrea has given me access to the mountain of tips and sightings that have come in on social media. I want to see if there's anything I can learn from them. Many of these messages claim to know what happened to Georgina. It's heartbreaking. They're the kind of messages that no mother should ever have to read. Oh my gosh. But this is the thing with the internet. How can you verify any of this? I can see sightings in Ireland here, Saudi Arabia and London. We've had messages saying that Georgina's been cremated because she owed some drug money. They cremated her and scattered her ashes in some land around here. There was another one. They'd cut her up into pieces so you'll never find her and scattered to pieces here and there. I think it was that sort of theory. I did find it quite scary because I thought it quite could possibly be true. I can see that the police actually investigated 70 different sightings of Georgina. Wading through all that material was tough for Andrea and her family, and so they sought the help of a veteran investigator. Clive Driscoll is a former Metropolitan Police detective who specialises in cracking cold cases, including the racially motivated murder of Stephen Lawrence, solved after 15 years. I'm hoping his experience could shed some light on why police made mistakes early on in the investigation and what can be done now to make it right. When did you meet Andrea? I was asked to come down uh, because of, um, I was told of some of the difficulties around yeah. uh, the case. There's always someone that, that is refusing to let them die almost, uh, you know. And certainly Andrea is 100% is, is that. What do you make of the way it's been handled by police? The police have acknowledged failing, appears to be not collecting all of the CCTV in a timely fashion, and thereby that means that some of it is actually erased, gone forever. There were many, many reasons why you would have possibly treated Georgina as vulnerable. Um, just because of her lifestyle and she did have a drug problem, I believe, she did have that. But you're not paid to pick and choose who you serve, the police serve the public. And all of that breeds a lack of confidence and, and that makes the investigation harder. In fact, you try your hardest for all of them. One of the big failings, uh, you know, in several investigations that I inherited in this one is that the, the family no longer have confidence or what would you recommend? Stephen was the best part of 15, 16 years. What we did on all of the cases that we succeeded in when previously they hadn't been successful was start again. By October 2018, Georgina had been missing for eight months. Andrea pressed on with her own campaign and the family took another opportunity to keep her disappearance in the public eye. And um, we're here today um, because it's Georgina's birthday, so we're, the candlelight vigil is for, to, for people who support us, and friends, friends of Georgina's friends. Of... We had invited the community, our family, friends, to, to come in and light a candle of hope for Georgina. What was that atmosphere like? Heartbreaking, because you could just see people who 
just felt really touched by how much people came to support yeah. our family. Although the vigil was tough for the family, it did have the desired effect in terms of publicity. In the months after, I'm told there was a dramatic development. That ransom note was shocking. We want 10,000 bitcoins, and if they didn't, they would put Regina outside Worthing Hospital and she wouldn't be alive. I'm investigating the disappearance of Georgina Garcella from her hometown of Worthing in March 2018. Eight months on, her family have been through a roller coaster of emotions, and the missing persons case has escalated into a murder inquiry. And now, on what would have been her 31st birthday, there were claims of kidnap. Mum Andrea and younger sister Arij told me what they knew. There was someone that got in touch with the police with a ransom note. That ransom note was shocking. Um, that completely threw us. It was literally the only lead, the only thing we had at that time. We've had her um, for a while and we want 10,000 bitcoins. They need to have it, I think it was a week. And if they didn't, they would put Georgina outside Worthing Hospital and she wouldn't be alive. In kidnapping cases, it's customary to ask questions that only the supposed hostage could answer in order to make sure they're still alive. One of the proof of life questions was, what was the name of Georgina's cat? and we knew that no one else could possibly know that. So they were able to answer that question? Yeah. In a way, it kind of gave you hope. Mm. You thought, oh my God, like, someone knows where she is. OK, well, if that's the case, let's give them money. Let's, let's find out. Could this solve the mystery of where Georgina had been for all those months? Missing because she'd been held captive and alive this whole time? The ransom note offered her family fresh hope that she'd be returned safely. But what did the police make of it? In 2019, I understand that there was a ransom letter. This was obviously deliberately targeted towards Andrea and it had been well researched. As you can imagine, incredibly distressing. And through quite rigorous investigation and use of fast time tactics, they were able to identify that it was in fact a hoax. Uh. Andrea had been deliberately targeted by a heartless, unscrupulous person who, who sought to exploit the, the sort of tragedy that she was dealing with um, and extort some money. Because so it was linked to other hoaxes and they were able to trace this contact um, from South Africa. Um, good that we were able to get to um, some closure with that. Wow. Yeah, I mean, devastating for Andrea. By the time the ransom note was dismissed as a hoax, Georgina had been missing for nearly a year. Dismayed by the lack of progress, the family wanted the police to move things forward. DCI Andy Wollstenholme had already ordered a fresh review of all CCTV. When I was reviewing the investigation, I'd only just taken over as SIO. Um, it came to my attention that this footage did exist and it hadn't been viewed. And it took about three months to get through all of that footage. We have this very short clip of, um, of two women walking across um, Chapel Road in the centre of Worthing um, about six hours after that, um, that CCTV um, from Clifton Food and Wines. It's not brilliant footage and it's really quick. And you can see in the... Oh my gosh, yeah, that is her. That clip was reviewed by myself and by the team. I think we watched it hundreds of times. That looks exactly like her. Well, it could be Georgina, and that was, that was my thought. However, when you do look at it, there are things that are different in that CCTV footage. The shoulder bag that she's wearing is completely different to the one that she had at Clifton Food and Wine. So are you saying that Georgina's not identifiable in that footage? Yeah, I, I haven't got this as a confirmed sighting as of Georgina. What about the second person? We've gone to great lengths to try and identify both of the people shown in that footage positively. Um, to date, we haven't been able to identify um, either of the two people that are shown in that footage. But there's someone else who's seen the footage. 
Georgina's mum, Andrea. The police found a new clip of Georgina. Can you tell me more about that? They said because there was a few differences in the handbag. They always say we can't corroborate it because we can't see her face. <laughs> and mum knows her daughter. I know how she walks, how she holds her head. And you're confident that's Georgina? Yeah, I, I always say it's definitely her. When a mum says that she recognises her own daughter on camera, it's hard to understand how anyone can dispute it. But in a police investigation, science matters more than sentiment. Detectives said they couldn't corroborate the images. But I want to see if I can. Andy. I'm meeting former National Crime Agency detective and cyber crime expert Andy Crocker. I've asked him to study the footage and see if he can tell us once and for all whether it is Georgina in that clip. Let's have a look at the, the, the two bits of CCTV that we've got. The, there's Georgina coming. She's got a handbag there. It's got two quite prominent buckles on them. Yeah. Now, this is the, the bit of video that you asked whether we could enhance. Yeah, exactly. I, I took that still, and I zoomed in it, and I highlighted that you can clearly you can see... really see. There's two buckles on that bag. Everybody's missed it. And I can say now that they match up perfectly with yeah. the first one. He's got a very similar hairstyle. What I then did was zoom in here. And what I've done is I've maneuvered the head around so that it's approximately where the head on the other image is. Wow. Oh, my gosh. That's exactly the same shape hairstyle. This footage that has never been confirmed or verified to be Georgina, you're pretty confident to say yeah. that it is her. To me, that proves it beyond any doubt, really. Yeah, that's huge. Question then is, is that person has ever been identified? That could well be the last person to see Georgina alive. That person might have a clue as to what happened to Georgina. That's incredible work, Andy. Thank you so much for that. You're welcome. Andy's study of the footage is fascinating. He came to the same conclusion as Andrea's maternal instinct. However, Sussex police say they had an independent digital forensic expert also analyse the footage, and they couldn't confirm or rule out if the person in that clip is Georgina. Frustrated with the police's lack of progress, Andrea took her own investigation to the next level. Hi, Donal. Thanks for meeting with me today. She reached out to investigative reporter and criminologist Donal McIntyre. Donal, at what point did the family bring you onto the case? The family brought me into the case, I think, at their darkest point of desperation. And they reached out to me on Twitter. I have access to the underworld, an area I know pretty well. So what did you find out about Georgina's disappearance? We've spoken to a number of people who suggested that Georgina move drugs around, all very low level. This is genuinely shocking me. Well, this has come out of nowhere. I'd heard Georgina may have taken drugs, but no one, family, friends or police, have mentioned anything about being mixed up with drug gangs. One of the most curious things was that she'd met somebody on the train from Worthing to Brighton and she'd told them that she was about to do something Dramatic, a great change in her life was going to happen. You spoke to this person? We've spoken to a number of people who suggested that Georgina, you know, had that in her mind. Right. At the same time, she was in the company of very dangerous people, people who may not have taken uh, her change in direction very happily. Was Georgina running with a dangerous crowd? The sort who'd use violence if she wanted to get out, and they felt like they could no longer trust her. From the sounds of it, she was caught up in a lifestyle that she wanted to get out of. Are you still in touch with these people? Yeah. Is there any way that you can put me in contact? Yeah. Best of luck and keep safe. Thank you. And Donal was true to his words. They'll kill you, because that's what it's like with drug dealers. Once you choose to leave, that's so they can't trust you, so you just end up killed.
I'm on England's south coast, investigating the disappearance of 30-year-old Georgina Garcella, who vanished in broad daylight in March 2018. I've uncovered far more than I anticipated when I started out. A faltering police inquiry leading Georgina's family to taking matters into their own hands. False sightings all over the world, a kidnapping hoax, and now, rumours that Georgina may have been exploited by a drug gang. I've made contact with someone close to that world. Thank you for agreeing to meet with me today. For his own safety, I've agreed to protect his identity. I've heard that you can tell me a bit more about a sides of Georgina's life. I was made aware by someone that I used to be associated with a certain drug scene that uh, Georgina would hang out with. And Georgina ended up involved with County Lions drug dealers from London. From London? From London. County Lions gangs move drugs from big cities into other areas of the country, often forcing kids and vulnerable adults to store and supply them. It's a disturbing theory, but my source claims Georgina may have been manipulated by this network. Georgina, she would run the drugs for the County Lions dealers. Seriously? Yeah. And, and you are certain about this? Yeah. How would she get linked to uh, drug dealers in London? Worthing is one of the hotspots for County Lines drug dealers. And with the circle of friends Georgina was involved with, there was a lot of uh, drugs floating about. But why would she have disappeared, in your opinion? Uh, she could have told them she was out, that she was leaving. So once you uh, decide to leave, they'll kill you, they'll get rid of you, because they've got no use for you anymore. And you know too much, you know, you'll just end up killed. That has actually just spun me. You sound really sure about what you're saying. Yeah. I'm, um, I can't even express how shocked I am. While this source seems credible, I can't substantiate his claims any further. Happy birthday to you. Georgina was surrounded by a loving and stable family, but she was also vulnerable. Did they ever suspect she was involved with drug gangs? I can't see it because Georgina never had any money. I mean, surely if she was involved in drug gangs and things, she would have been had a bit more money than to ask me for two pounds or three pounds. She didn't have anything to show for it. There are real differing opinions on whether or not the drug gang rumour is true. While Georgina's mum clearly doesn't believe she was mixed up with them, I want to know what the police think. I heard that Georgina was involved in drug gangs. Have you heard that rumour? We have heard rumours that a drug gang amongst many other people might be responsible for Georgina's murder. And like all of the other rumours, we're unable to say whether there is any truth to them until we can find some evidence that supports um, any of the things that are claimed within them. So do you suspect foul play has happened here? Yeah, bearing in mind I've crimed it as a murder, I clearly do suspect foul play. One of my hypotheses is of course that Georgina has been killed by someone, but it's one that is the working hypothesis at this time. With official inquiries still going on, I appreciate why Andy is unable to say more. But in my mind, all the evidence is sadly now pointing to Georgina having come to harm. I'm heading back to see Donal. It sounds like something really bad has happened to Georgina. Where do you think she might be? Well, I think she's dead. I think something violent, uh, devastating happened to her. She was seen allegedly being picked up and placed in a car and driven. And there were rumours that her body was buried in an old, uh, in a building site near Tevil Gate. Tevil Gate was once a busy shopping centre right in the heart of Wervin. Demolition started on the 5th of March 2018, just two days before Georgina disappeared. The site is close to where she was last seen, and although police carried out an intensive investigation into the location, their physical search revealed nothing, and they ruled it out as a deposition site. Still, speculation that someone disposed of Georgina's body there persists in Worthing, as her family well know. Do you ever get any tips on Tevil Gate? We still get them now about that. Um, even last week, I had a few. As recent as, yeah, as recent, yeah. They, you know, they said that they'll say to me, "You shouldn't let um, that Tevil Gate be built on." I, as a mother, according to some of those witness sightings, which they can't corroborate, 
and there is a strong chance that she was there. It was upsetting, really. I mean, it was, it was really upsetting. Although the rumours about Hevel Gate continue to circulate in this town, no one has provided any proof that Georgina was disposed of there, or anywhere else for that matter. It must be so hard for Georgina's mum not knowing the truth. I started this investigation with a really clear aim to find out what happened to Georgina Varsala. But sadly, each time there's a new lead, it hits a dead end, and the answer remains just out of reach. The posters and pictures around Worthing are a constant reminder of a case that still plays on people's minds here and the pain Georgina's friends and family continue to go through. Every day that we don't find something is just another day to struggle. So every time there's a, a potential lead that turns out it was never a lead, it is draining. At Christmas and birthdays, like, there's a huge part missing in the family. I often drive past and see the pictures the railings and on the lampposts and stuff. And I often, sometimes even talk out loud to myself, go, where are you? God damn it, where are you? The theory that Georgina vanished due to her involvement with drug gangs is one of many. Detectives have also been unable to fully rule out suicide, accidental death or kidnapping. Those closest to Georgina are still hoping the police can provide them with answers. What do you want to happen now? I mean, the team and I are, are really desperate to solve this case. Part of our reason for taking part in, in this documentary is that we want this to be seen by people, think about what they know, think about who they know, um, and if they have any information at all, to contact the police um, to tell us what it is they know. Crime Stoppers are offering a £10,000 reward for information um, that leads to the arrest and the solving of this case. Well, Andy, thank you so much. I really do hope that someone does come forward. Thank thanks you. very much, and thanks for speaking to us. While Georgina remains a missing person, the weight of evidence suggests that she's been murdered. But without a body, suspect or trial, there's no real answers, justice or peace for Georgina's mum, Andrea. I think lots of things. Did they get into a car somewhere? Did she have a conflict with somebody and she fought back and they hit her or something? and then they've got scared and tried to dispose of her. I do think she's come to some harm. For Georgina's mother, sisters and friends, it's the not knowing that continues to cause them so much pain and distress. All this information gathered and the picture still isn't complete. But for those who loved and knew her, it's heartbreaking. For anyone that's watched this program and has any information that could help bring them closure, please come forward. Georgina, we never stop looking for you. We never give up on you. We love you and we miss you so much. If you've been affected by any of the issues mentioned in this programme, please head to our helpline page.